Hello, and welcome to Day Off Gaming. I am your host, Talion, and we are going to play a game called The Longest Journey. As you can tell, it came out in 1999, and it's one of my favorite, one of my more favorite games. There is a lot of storytelling to this, so there is a lot of dialogue. Uh, the voice acting, I think, is pretty decent. Uh, the puzzles... Uh, some are hard. Uh, some not so much. Let's bring down the music just a little. Um, I think we'll leave everything else alone. Yeah, okay, that's a little bit better, I think, with the music. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start a journey. I don't know how many of you have ever played this game before, uh, but there are a total of three games. I still consider The Longest Journey the better of the three. Uh, they came out with, I believe, Dreamfall... Uh, Dreamfall Chapters, I believe it's called. Uh, that was the sequel. And... You could definitely tell they had a plan for it to be like a two-parter. And I don't... And sadly, it did not come into fruition. It really did not do well. Uh, the sequel didn't. So they ended up doing... An, like an independent ended up getting together and basically finished the series. Uh, there's a game on Steam uh, that you can actually buy... And if you actually are into games like this, um, but I think most of you might enjoy the simplistic of it, uh, simplicity. Um, and there are several things that are really cool, like this book of secrets we can't get into right now. Uh, but if you beat the, uh, game... They have a lot of back, uh, like, behind-the-scenes stuff on it, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's go ahead and get into it. And let's see, continue. Yeah, we don't have anything to continue. Credits. Um, the credits scene is pretty much um, we'll do later if you really care about who actually made the game. Uh, but Funcom really did do an amazing job with this game. I don't even think they're still in, still around. I haven't really seen anything come from them since, but they were a Norwegian uh, studio uh, back in the day. So, but if you have the chance, I would definitely check this out and play it yourself before watching this playthrough. But if you have no uh, issue seeing spoilers or seeing how the gameplay is, I hope you join me. So let's get started. So, you've come to hear me tell a story, have you? If you please, we would love to hear one of your stories. You have seen so much. You have lived so long. Oh, <laughs> so good of you to remind me of my age, child. No, don't worry. I am an old woman, but I've lived a long and fulfilling life. And I do have stories to tell. Which story would you like to hear? A true one. A true story. All my stories are true, child. There are enough fairy tales in the worlds already. There's no need for me to make up more, believe me. Tell us the story of the balance, then. <laughs> you want the story of the balance? Oh, that's a long story, child. And not one I'd venture to tell at this hour. Perhaps I could tell you a story that I heard a long time ago. A story that became a crucial turning point in the history of the balance. And that set in motion wheels that, to this day, are still turning. Please, yes, that does sound like a story we'd like to hear. Very well. This story, like all good stories, begins where it ends. In a tower in a realm that is no more.
don't tell me I'm dreaming again. You know, for once, just once, it would be nice to have a decent night's sleep without waking up screaming from a bad dream at 4 a.m. So we played the character April. Uh, she is the main protagonist of this entire game. So let us get started. I really did like the opening sequence uh, introducing this to this game. This is a very point and click type puzzle game. I'm in my undies. That's so not appropriate. So it's it's a pretty straightforward game, which I don't mind. It's kind of a, in my opinion, one of the more relaxing uh, type games I have played. Postcard pretty. Real life never looked this good. Real life never looked this good. There's a storm heading this way. Even the weather sucks in my dreams. <laughs> I feel so charmed. And of course, there's different uh, icons. Of course, the arrow, the eye. When you're able to actually interact with stuff, it'll change a little bit. What's happening? Oh, perfect. I guess if I don't do something to save that egg, I'll suffer seven years of bad karma or something. As you can see, it kind of like becomes almost like an arrow, um, or an arrow tip, however you want to call it, when you can interact with items. Looks reptilian, but it can't be. It's much, much too big and, and I don't much care for reptiles. <laughs> and if the arrow is red, as you can see, it le tells you kind of a direction that you can go uh, to a new area. Well, let's see if we can grab it. Did that sound come from the egg? Boy, that's some chick. I don't think I can get a good grip on it. It's too big and slippery and I might drop it by accident. Eh, it's only a dream. You'll be fine. I'm an artist, not a botanist, but I'm pretty certain this tree is dead. We're close to it. Well, let's go check out the nest. It's a nest, padded with large scales, very large scales. For some strange reason, I have a feeling I should get the hell out of here before the tenants return. <laughs> this is interesting. I've never seen a scale this size before. I'll keep it as a souvenir. Not sure why you're dreaming, right? So there's two ways to access your inventory. You can either right, uh, right click and it pulls it up, or you can of course click the inventory box. Uh, let's see. It's as dry as a bone. It'd probably snap right off in a second. Well, let's go take it. Why not? The suffering we must endure. What? Why do you take such pleasure in torturing us? Torturing you? Who are you? We are the voice of all trees, the spirit of wood and leaf. You're a talking tree? No, a tree does not talk. At least not in your tongue. The tongue of trees is the language of wood, root, and leaf. Who are you then? Like we said, we are the voice of all trees. Whenever an injustice is done, we must speak for the tree if we are present. It's the branch. I shouldn't have broken the branch off. Oh, what does it matter anyway? There is nothing more to be done for us. We are simply here to provide comfort in the final passing to Earth. We? I only see one of you. 
We are one with our host, as we are all one spirit, but legion. Yeah, uh, thanks for clearing that up. We do not expect you to understand. You are human. As you can tell, there definitely is a lot of dialogue. Some of it seems redundant. Some of it is just kind of filler. Some of it I just enjoy because it's like a good banter between two people. Um, that's one thing I definitely enjoy about this game. So, let's see. What happened to the tree? What happened to the tree? Oh, the pain. As the battle raged, we... Battle? Between the mother and black chaos. She was only protecting her child, but it would not back down, and the force of their battle shook the mountain. The brook that fed us was led astray, and without water, we began to wither and die. What's the deal with the egg? Egg? What egg? Oh, of course, the child. Whenever the mother was absent, we were entrusted with the safety of the child. But now, withered and without strength, we can do nothing to help. We have failed the mother, and we despair. Our shame knows no bounds. Who are you again? We are the wood spirit. We come to all trees in the hour of great need. To provide comfort and aid in the passing to Earth, and to give a voice to those who suffer. Our time is running out as we speak. The passing to Earth is about to begin. Leave us now. What about the egg? Oh, it is too late. Without sustenance, we do not have the strength to bring it safely home. We have failed. And the Earth will know our shame for all time to come. Yeah, let's see. I think it's a little glum. What do you think? Are you always this glum? We are here because it is too late. The passing has begun. Leave us. Please. Isn't there anything I can do to help? Oh, we do not expect a human to come to our aid. Lose the attitude, okay? Just tell me if there's anything I can do. It is futile. We need water, but there is none. Not after the brook changed course. I'll find a way. Don't panic. We do not panic. Unlike you, we accept our destiny. If, however, against all odds, you do succeed, we will carry the child safely back into its nest. Do not make a foolish attempt on your own. It would spell certain misery. Yeah, we tried to pick up the egg already and it was too big and slippery for us. So let's go check out this brook that we keep hearing over here. According to the, um, spirit, there was some kind of battle that split the rock and changed the course of the stream. I'm an artist, not a botanist, but I'm pretty certain this tree is dead, or close to it. Fresh mountain water. Back in the real world, they'd probably charge 15 bucks a bottle for this. Right now I think it's about close to three though, so, you know, not too far off. Okay, let's go see what we can do to fix this. Uh, we have a scale. Can we do something with that? I'll lose my balance and fall if I have to hold a scale like this. I need something to support it with. If you noticed, it was blinking just slightly when we had it over the stream. That's how you know it can interact with it. So we have a stick. So we can take that. And as you can tell, they're blinking. I think I just made a funnel. Cool. I'm so proud of myself. So now we can take that. Put it with the stream. 
get it to where it's on the stream. This should do the trick. There we go. That's a quick rejuvenation, ain't it? Talk about instant rehab. Right? Neat. My arts and crafts teacher would be so very proud of me. Alright. Let's go back and let's have a chat with the uh, tree now. Or spirit. Hello? Hello? Leave us be. Are you okay? We find our strength returned, and so we have no time for idle conversation. We must drink and rejoice. Aren't we forgetting something? Hush, listen. The song of ancient wood. Is it not sweet? Sweet, definitely. Yeah, the baby's probably ready to boogie down as well. The baby, of oh, the egg, thank the earth, we almost forgot. Uh-oh. Was that? Uh oh. It is you. You have come. You know me? April, daughter, I have been waiting for you. Waiting? Why? Because it begins here with you. As it always has. What do you mean? The breach and the mending. The pain and the joy. The end of the old and the dawn of the new. A different world. I am the mother of what is. But you, you are the mother of a future that may yet be. How will I know? How will I know what to do? I will guide you. And I will protect you as much as I can. But in the end, you are on your own. I'm afraid. You always were, my child, my daughter. This is probably not a good thing. Well, that's one way to end a dream. Falling off a cliff. What a nightmare. I'm completely exhausted. I must have been tossing and turning all night. It's so hot in here, too. No wonder I keep having these weird dreams. I've basically been simmering in my own sweat every night this past week. It doesn't look like it's gonna cool down anytime soon, either. It's another sunny day in Newport. Well, it's a good thing the studio's got proper air conditioning. I promised myself I was going to spend most of the day working, and I don't intend to break that promise. Not this time. All right. 
Let's take a look around, see what we got. We got a cash card. My cash card at the moment is really quite useless. There can't be more than a dollar or two left in it. All right, so we're a little broke. Let's see. I'm not good at taking care of living things, but this plant's doing just fine despite months of neglect. It's been too hot to sleep with a cover, so I don't. <laughs> I had to borrow some posters from the cafe because I just can't afford to buy any of my own. When I think about it, that's so depressing. <laughs> Taking stuff from work just to decorate your house or your apartment. I got those posters from the cafe. I wonder why it's called a twin bed. There's no way it could possibly accommodate two people. Not that I've had a chance to try. <laughs> I wonder why it's called a twin bed. I don't need to make my bed. It's been too hot to sleep with a cover. Nice view, if you're into brickwork. Oh, we can look out. Hey, there's a ducky. It's a rubber ducky, hopelessly trapped under that rusty old grill. It's a seagull. The poor guy looks quite hungry. Looks like a clothesline. Is it on hooked to our side or their side? It's a clothesline. Oh, well. It's a clothesline. We can't grab it, can we? Spiky. I still haven't figured out what runs through the canals in Venice, but I'm sure it can't be water. Yeah, if we're looking at the... Whatever those pipes are spewing out, I know one thing for sure, it ain't water. Yeah, I was gonna say, we probably don't want to go swimming. I don't know what that chain's for, but it's connected to some kind of mechanism at the bottom of the canal. Yeah, let's pull it. No. We can't do nothing with it. Okay. Maybe it's stuck. That's always possible. Alright. The wardrobe is actually made of real wood, and not that synthetic crap that makes me sneeze and itch all over. Well, let's take a peek. All right, so my wardrobe's sort of chic deficient, but I can't afford to be cutting edge. Useful, practical, and cheap is my shopping mantra. <laughs> it's a bunch of drawings I drew when I was a kid. I don't even know why I brought them here. They mean absolutely nothing to me. I could only carry one suitcase with me when I left home. There was so much I would have loved to bring, but c'est la vie. At least it was a clean break with my past. I guess when all my hard work starts paying off, I'll get a house and fill it with all kinds of new junk. The past, who needs it? It's Constable Guybrush, my toy mo- Oh, ape. He doesn't much like being called monkey. <laughs> Guybrush, little threepwood. From Monkey Island. Look at this poor guy. Constable Guybrush is a strange hybrid between man, ape, and musician. In addition to being an officer of the law, of course. Hey! You! Yeah, you! Hands up! Spread your legs! And do the monkey! Mildly amusing, but yes. irritating as hell. We'll shut him up now. <laughs> <laughs> Dance! Alright. Let's see what else we have in here. That's my desk. So, theoretically, that's where I'm supposed to do my work. I think my muse has departed me for greener pastures, though. Because lately, inspiration's been fleeting at best. Hmm. Shelves. Shelves. <laughs> it's a picture of me and my friends. It's a picture of Charlie, Emma, and me, in Florence Park. Marcus took it about a month ago, before it got real hot. Huh. Can't do anything with that. Okay. My on-again, off-again diary. We've had a turbulent relationship, her and I. Dear diary, note to self. Dreams of talking trees and dragons aside, it's still no excuse for talking to inanimate matter in the real world. So quit it. <laughs> All 
Now that we have the diary, um, it's pretty much useful for us to be able to keep track of some of our items or quests that we need to do. So it's kind of a nice thing to have. I've been keeping a diary intermittently since I was five years old. Not the same one, of course. I started this one, I think, April of this year. Huh. Fits the name then, doesn't it? What's this? There's a loose sheet of paper in here. Time sheet. Hey, it's my time sheet from the cafe. I completely forgot I put it in here. Good thing I found it, because I'm broke. Yeah, we need some money. All right. It's a list of the hours I worked this past week at the cafe. All right, let's see. Posters, painting. That's my work. It's supposed to be a portrait of my life study teacher, but I think he might disagree. <laughs> That fan is supposed to keep the room nice and cool in the summer. Sure. Yeah. It's at least, oh, one quarter of a degree cooler in here when it's on. Oh, so it works amazingly. Gotcha. Think that's everything in here? I'd better head over to the studio to do some work. Only two weeks until the big show opens and my contribution is in serious need of attention. Might be a good idea to get dressed first, though. Might be a good idea. Oh, Marcus. Hey, babe. Babe, you're looking real sexy today. Zach, listen, okay. I've got to run, and... What's going on, April? How you been? So, how do we want to answer him? Do you want to be kind of a dick? Well, I'll let you guys kind of decide on what, how you think he is with just being polite. Pretty good, and you? Fantastic. Listen, April, how about you and me getting together sometime soon? Like, uh, tonight. The pavilion is really cooking this week. We could pop some raptures, do a little close dancing. How about it? Sounds like good fun, but not tonight. Hey, whenever. Just don't expect me to be waiting around for you forever. No chick is worth that heartache. See you around. What an asshole. And he kind of is. So, <laughs> in the long run, he kind of is. It's a fact. As an F-A-C-T. Free access terminal. Computer. Voice interface is not installed. Please use the touchscreen interface to communicate with this free access terminal. Oh, okay. Why not consider a very reasonable upgrade? In addition to a voice interface, true holo display technology and Instacredit compatibility. No, I'll just use my hands, thanks. You are missing out on a great opportunity. If you upgrade now... Hold on! You understood that. You have a voice interface installed already. Why would I pay to have another one installed? Current voice interface is for sales purposes only. If you take advantage of this very affordable upgrade today... No, really. You... This terminal doesn't belong to me. Noted. Please refrain from voice communication in the future, or you will be reported to the fact FUB and charged for processing time. FUB? Fair Use Bureau. They are authorized to carry deadly arms. Well, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> no, I don't think I'd appreciate the FUB barging in on me right now. Oh, okay. Let's see, that's Charlie's. Let's Charlie's see. apartment. His place is twice as big as mine, with a private bathroom. Dang, how did he get... a huge bed. I guess he likes his creature comforts. I was going to say, I'd really like to know how he is able to afford that. Nobody home. Alrighty, let's see, let's head on down. And you can double click to run, which eventually is a good thing to do. Let's see, a chair. We can go outside. 
Be considerate. Keep the volume down after 11 p.m. Fiona. I can't tell what that note's saying as long as it's up there. Fiona's handwriting is not particularly legible. Okay, I'll take a look at that here in a minute. I'm sorry, but big sweaty jocks do not turn me on. I'll take a nerd any day. <laughs> Annual summer blowout at the Fringe Cafe, Friday, August 4th, 8 p.m. Free food, live performances by Royne Dale, Harlequin Masquerade, The Go-Getters. Tickets available at the bar, $10 only, spread the word. Nice. Pizza and movie night, Monday, July 31st, BYOS. EYO what? Soap? <laughs> Let's see anything else we can take a peek. San Francisco. I'd love to go there someday. Someday soon, hopefully. Common Room Duty Roster, July 27th, April and Emma. Oh joy, manual labor, my favorite. Right? Isn't it everybody's? found a gold ring under the common room sofa if it's yours let me know but no false claims please fiona i did lose a gold ring a few weeks ago i hope this is the one i'll have to ask fiona about it and here's the april's diary so we can kind of go in here and do a little reading and see what she's been up to uh we'll read that though in the next episode at the beginning. But for right now, let's see what else we can find. Oh, match. Match book. Nice. We'll take that. That's, there's Fiona. Shelves. Shelves. <laughs> the omnipresent screen. I don't pretend to know how it works, but all the data apparently passes through tiny little black holes in the fabric of our dimension. You know? Not that really freaks me out when I think about it. I can understand that. That's Fiona, my landlady. She's all right. At least she doesn't respond, huh? That'd be freaky. We have a nice view of the bridges from this window. It's a chair. Morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. I had a bad nightmare. Again? Well, you're not the only one, darling. Mickey woke me up screaming in the middle of the night. She wouldn't go back to sleep until I made her a cup of herbal tea. Nightmares? Apparently. But she refuses to tell me what they were. I think she's embarrassed. That doesn't sound like Mickey. I know, darling. Don't tell her I said so. But I've never seen her so agitated in my life. She scared the hell out of me. I don't know why I have nightmares. I guess they could be stress-related. After all, the exhibition's right around the corner. Oh, yes. The school exhibition. How's that going? God, don't ask. I have no idea how I'm going to finish my painting on time. I haven't felt inspired in ages. I think you work too hard, darling. You need to relax once in a while. Live! Enjoy your youth. There's inspiration to be found in hedonism, you know. No, I don't know, but apparently you do. <laughs> I'm an authority on the subject, darling. Ask Mickey. She'll tell you I don't lift a finger around the place unless I absolutely have to. Oh, yeah. Let's see what's going on. Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Mind you, she's not literally tied up, of course. Although, that is a tempting thought. Are you getting into your sexual fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job. Thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? 
No, he's still sleeping, and Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps, and she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know, bastards. I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling, but I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. <laughs> yeah, I get that feeling sometimes. I definitely want to stay in. I have to worry about anything. Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? You can get some back uh, history on some of the characters. Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why? She's your best friend, darling. I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then. Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted, but she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. How about more about Emma? Probably not much, but we can find out. Anything else you can tell me about Emma? She ought to be a little more careful sometimes. She's a flirt. And although she doesn't mean any harm, some lads don't take too well to being teased and rejected. You should tell her that, though, being her best friend and all. I have told her. She won't listen. No. She does worry me a little, but she's a big girl and she can take care of herself. I'm certainly happy to have her living here. Next to you and Charlie, she's my favorite tenant. What did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? Not for me to say, darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. Charlie's in the friend zone. <laughs> Honestly, Charlie's a pretty cool uh, character. Actually, I love all the characters in this game. Each one, in my opinion, has a unique personality, personality set, which, you know, kind of makes the story kind of intriguing, at least to me. What's up with Zach Lee? Zach? I think we both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. My thoughts, exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. 
Still, he pays his rent on time and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. Well, shoot. But that's okay. As you can tell, this game definitely has a lot of banter. But, as I said, I kind of like it. Especially if you never played the game before. It gives you a lot of background on everybody. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Fiona. Me? Why? It's not much to say, darling. I love my job. I love Venice. And I love being with Mickey. I'm a happy girl. Sure, sometimes I wish I could go back to England to see my family. But that's water under the bridge, so to speak. I'm very happy with myself and my life here in Newport. How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life, and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. But she knew how to treat me like a woman. You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking about your sex life, do you? Never. And if I ever do, please shoot me. Can you tell me something about the border house? That's one of my favorite topics, darling. What precisely do you want to know? The border house is basically where you're living. That's where what this building is. What made you decide to run a boarding house? That's a long story. One of the reasons Mickey and I got together was that we shared a passion for the classic English country inns. You know. Quaint, weathered buildings, funny old ladies, and oddly suggestive names like the Lazy Cock. <laughs> so why come here to the big city? To America? We wanted to create a place with a similar atmosphere and hospitality here in Newport. Like a safe house for people like you and I to call home, if only for a short while. So we discussed different options for a few months, and then we decided we wanted to start a boarding house for young, penniless students and artists. You decided you wanted to do that here in Venice? We knew that Venice was the place for us long before we came here, but the hard part was finding a building cheap enough. And this building was available? Not at first. Like most of the buildings in Venice, this one used to be a factory, but when we first looked at it, a local company was planning to turn it into a bar and nightclub. It was so perfect for our purposes, though, that we appealed to the Venice Borough Council, and after outlining our plans, they gave us the go-ahead at a reduced price, provided we kept our promises regarding our tenants. What inspired the name Border House? That came quite naturally when we saw the place. It's on the border between two worlds, isn't it? Between Venice and the city itself. And at the same time, I also believe we're on the border between two more abstract worlds. Between art and spirit on the one hand, and science and technology on the other. That's very poetic, Fiona. Yes, I've practiced. I may be an inner city girl, but I can philosophize and bullshit with the best of them. Do you and Mickey own the place together? We own it together, yes. And we've shared the responsibilities between us. Mickey takes care of the maintenance of the building, and I busy myself with the administrative tasks. I also take care of the day-to-day -day management of our tenants, like deciding whether or not to let someone rent a room. And, of course, the unpleasant business of booting someone out. I thought you enjoyed that part. Yes, all right. In some cases I do, but not always. It can get quite messy. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could help you out, darling. Alright, let's see what else we got. Looks like we only got a few more things. What can you tell me about Venice? I don't really know much about the history of Venice. You should really ask someone with an interest in local affairs. What I do know is that this whole neighborhood used to be an industrial area. 
and that about 100 years ago they converted most of the buildings into residences for students and the homeless. And it's a nice place to live, certainly. Friendly people, liberal attitudes, great clothing stores, quite perfect, aside from that dreadful stench from the canals in the summertime. Do you like Newport? The city? Well, I stay in Venice most of the time. It's easy to forget we're just a tiny little pocket in the middle of a sprawling urban wasteland. But do I like it? I think Newport is one of the great cities of our age. Love it or hate it, you can't argue with that. And which one is it? Love or hate? I haven't decided yet, darling. Ask me again in another 15 years. Perhaps I'll have an answer then. <laughs> I was going to say, probably a little bit of both. Oh, what's the story behind her apartment? Okay. What's the story behind my apartment? Your apartment? It's more a room than anything else. Not much more than a large closet, really. It's not that small. It's one of our smallest rooms, but it's cheap and it's on a nice floor. I hope you're happy there. I like it. It's convenient. And it's got a... Uh, an interesting view. That's nice to hear, darling. As for the story behind it, no unexplained deaths or hidden pirate treasures, I'm afraid. Just a long string of students on a tight budget. I don't have any more questions right now. Don't hesitate asking if there's something else you want to know. I'd right. better get going. Yeah, we got After enough, school. uh... Yeah, there are no more classes this semester, but I have to finish my painting by next Thursday. For what it's worth, darling, good luck. And don't work too hard, all right? That was a lot of dialogue. This game is very dialogue heavy, as I stated before. But we do have a note that we need to I find saw out. this note on the corkboard. I think the ring might belong to me. I'm sorry I have to ask, but could you describe the ring? Sure thing. It says Sweet Sixteen. My dad gave it to me. I think it was the only birthday of mine he remembered, or at least acknowledged. Yes, that's the one. I found it under the sofa when I was vacuuming. Here you are, darling. Thanks. It's not worth much, but it's got a certain sentimental value for me. It's a very pretty ring. Yeah, yeah it is. My dad never gave me anything pretty before or since. He must have won a poker game or something that day. You know, it's strange. I don't hate him. He's a bastard and he treated me like crap almost every single day of my life. But I don't hate him. I feel sorry for him. Why? Because he doesn't know how to love. He can't love anybody or anything. And because he'll be miserable every second of every minute of every day until the day he dies. God. I'm glad that life is behind me. I hope they never have to see him again. No, that doesn't sound right. I've made a choice not to see him again. Ever. We've all had that at one point in our life, I think, that we have to cut off someone toxic. It's really sad when you do, but sometimes your life is better. We're going to go a little bit longer, and then we will call this episode. I love this mural. Even though the motif is a little trite. I mean, fairy tale forests and magical dragons? Still, it's pretty. Yeah, it is I pretty wonder cool. what happened to the artist. Probably making a bundle from cheesy fantasy calendars and book covers. That's always possible. What's over here? Yeah. I clean. guess that's a pressure gauge. It's at 100. That's percent, I guess. 100% pressure? Hmm, yeah, maybe. That cable's been ripped in two. It's a rusty old wheel. I'd imagine it turns the water on and off. It yeah. won't budge. The pressure's probably too high. Yeah, pressure's way up here. Nada. 
Nope. Nothing. That's probably Mickey's handiwork. <laughs> She's the tool gal around these here parts. <laughs> I wonder why she put the clamp there, though. Oh, that'd be why. Oh. Seems the clamp served a purpose, <laughs> after all. <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah. The water tank's full. What a mystifying contraption, and completely absurd. What are all these valves and wheels and thingamajigs for? What grand purpose does it all serve? Just to cause us a headache. That's Cortez. He sits in the same spot almost every day. I hate to admit it, but he scares me a little. Oye, senorita. Yes? How are you this morning, senorita bonita? Hot. I see. The summers in Newport are never pleasant. And it will get worse before it gets better. They say there's another heat wave headed our way. Yeah, so I heard. So, you gonna be all right? You don't look dressed for the weather. Si Dios quiere. Sunshine and pretty senoritas give an old man like me the blues. I like my days cold and rainy. In fact, I think I prefer the world to be in black and white. Like an old movie. Like all good movies. But tell me, senorita Ryan, how would you describe your perfect day? Hmm. As I said, how do we want to reply? Honestly, for me, I prefer almost a mixture. I really don't. I love rain when I'm inside and I don't have to be out in it. But at the same time, I enjoy the sun where I can enjoy a good day out. I'm pretty sure many of you understand that. But we just, we got to get going. We can't hang around here. Come on. So, I don't know. Um, well, she's been miserable because it's been hot and sunny, so we'll just say cold and rainy. Cold and rainy like yours. Está bien. We are alike, you and I. But this heat is not why you are unhappy, no? You are trouble, my nightmares. What? You are afraid of them. You even fear your dreams may be real. Who told you about my nightmares? No one. I can tell from looking into your eyes. I see the ghosts that haunt you. I don't know who you've been talking to, but from now on, stay the hell away from me in my personal life. No puedo, Senorita Ryan. You have a destiny. Destiny? I don't care what you think. Just, just leave me alone. If you don't face them, I'm afraid your nightmares will continue. Soon they will appear to you even when you're awake. You need some serious help, you know that? We all do, April. That's the reason we are here, you and me. That's it. I don't have to listen to this. Perdóname. I've upset you. We didn't think you'd react this way. I hope we can talk again soon. I don't think so, no. Please. Think about it. And senorita, cuidado. Be careful. Ah, uh, yes, Cortez. He's he's a different uh, person altogether. But we're going to actually call the episode right here. It's a good stopping point. So let's go ahead and save our game. And the great part about it is it kind of tells you what chapter and what time and date that you save it. So it's kind of kind of nice. Let's you kind of get an idea of when you did stuff. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and look at April's diary real quick. The conversation log is exactly what it says. It tells you exactly what the conversation you had with people uh, and what your answers were. If you ever need to go back and maybe try to remember something. The April's diary, of course, is something totally different. 
So let's see, April 14th, 2009, a Friday. Happy birthday to me, the big one eight, joyous, right? Well, not to sound like a complete spoil sport, but 18 kind of feels kind of like 17. Only I can buy a gun and pilot a hovercraft. I kind of figured that the number 18 would cast light into the deep dark chasm of my soul and reveal some grand truth about the universe, like the meaning of life, or at least some explanation as to why all guys are complete idiots. But no, nothing. I'm the same person today that I was yesterday. No different, same old boring April, stuck in the same old boring life. Which of course does make me realize something important. I just have to get out of here soon. I have to leave. There's nothing here for me. Any, there's nothing here for me. No future and a past I prefer to forget. And I know where I want to go. The Venice Academy of the Visual Arts in Newport. God knows if they'll accept me into their fall program, but I have to try. Sarah went out there last year and she agreed to let me stay at her place for a short while until I can get a job in an apartment. Writing about leaving is both scary and exciting. It's scary because I've never really been on my own before and I've never been to Newport. And of course, I'm scared that good old daddy will find out and force me to stay. Not that he can, but he will certainly try. On the other hand, it's really exciting too. I can't imagine anything that beats starting my own life in a place like Venice. From what I've seen and heard, it looks great. There are a lot of little cafes and crisscrossing canals just like the real Venice in Italy. And most of the people who live there are young and creative and not afraid to look or sound or be different, which will make a nice change from this place. April 22nd. Today I called the academy and asked them about their admission requirements. And they told me to bring some of my work in when you arrive. They don't really have any specific requirements, only that you're talented and dedicated and hardworking. The lady I spoke to sounded nice, but she didn't make any promises. She told me there are a lot of applicants and only a limited amount of spaces. I know my work's good, even though I haven't had much training, and I'm definitely dedicated and hardworking. So why am I still nervous? May 1st. I'm sorry I haven't kept up with the events in this diary, but with my exams and everything else going on right before graduation, I haven't had the time. I know, I know, bad excuse. I'll just have to take time out, take time out to, and I'll definitely keep my diary up to date from now on. May 25th, ah, three weeks of complete silence. I look back at my previous diaries and I wonder where the hell did I find the time to write so much so often? Oh well. I'll try to remember what's going on these past few weeks. I passed all my exams for straight A's, of course, and tomorrow morning I'm leaving home. Yes, I'm making the leap into the great unknown and I'm never coming back here. I withdrew all my money from the bank, $2,190, and I packed a suitcase and a bag with my clothes and work samples and books and anything else I can't do without. Unfortunately, I have to leave so much my old toys, some of my big canvases, my screen, and it's not like I can have mom ship to them or anything. I'm leaving the letter for my family, but I'm not telling them where I'm going. 18 years under constant scrutiny is enough. I really don't want to carry any of that crap with me into my new life. Strangely enough, when I was packing this morning, I suddenly remembered something I'd forgotten a long time ago. When I was a kid, I kept all my drawings in a box under the floorboard so my dad wouldn't find them and berate me for wasting my time. The box was right where I put it, more than six years ago. I didn't feel like looking at any of the drawings right away, so I wrapped the box up and stuck it into my bag. I'll open it when I get to Venice. I don't think this is the right time for nostalgic reminiscence about my childhood, but I'm glad I remembered to pack the box. So tonight's the night. I'm sneaking out of here at 4 a.m. to catch the train to Greenvale. And from there, on to the big city itself, Newport. At dinner tonight, I'll see Mom, Dad, Daniel, and Owen for the last time in a long while. I don't really care if I ever see Dad again, but I feel sorry for Mom. She doesn't seem to care much for me, but I know she'll miss me. And I know she'll feel very guilty for turning a blind eye to the way he treated me throughout all those years. As for Danny and Owen, I don't really know. Danny's an asshole. He could theoretically improve, though I doubt he wants to. As for Owen, 
He's still a kid. He might turn out okay, but as long as dad's in control, I'm not too optimistic. I'm going to I'm going to the pond tonight to say goodbye. I haven't been there in a long while. Not since that crazy day. Well, I have to see it one last time or I'll never get it out of my head. As for my friends, I don't really want to say anything. I'll mail them when I get to Newport, the Venice. So this is the last entry I write in this house, in this room. In some strange way, I can't really understand. I'll miss it. Not much, but I did grow up here. I did spend 18 years, oh my god, in this place, and that's not soon forgotten or ignored. I don't want to feel bad for what I'm doing, but I can't help it. I do feel bad, a little. But more than anything, I'm excited about what tomorrow will bring. I think, yeah, I believe I might actually be happy. Imagine that. All right, so this is, let's see. Yeah, okay, this is where we start the actual journal of everything that we've uh, uncovered since uh, we started the game. And we'll try and keep an eye on these diaries because I really like these diary entries. They Just a little bit of padding. Uh, but I enjoy them. Friday, July 28, 2209. Way too early in the morning and I won't even try to describe the dream I had last night. Like, enough with the fairy tales already. I need to start dreaming about boys and shopping, you know? The important things in life. It just dawned on me that the student exposi exposition opens in less than two weeks. My painting, and I mean that in the broadest sense of the word, is not even close to being presentable. Even that's an overstatement. All I have is a blank canvas, and while that may fool some people, like in, whoa, what an expensive statement of nothingness, it won't fool my teachers. So today, I have to put in a solid six hours of work at the studio and just hope that inspiration will strike me like lightning from the sky. It could happen. Friday morning again. Okay, so I'm like on my way to school. I'm half asleep. I'm hot. The weather's been unbearable these past few days, to say the least. And I just want to get to the studio as soon as possible. And then this guy, Cortez, who's sitting outside the house like he does every single day, calls me over. Fine. Okay. I got nothing against the guy personally. I make small talk about the weather, just trying to get it over with. And then how would he know that I've been having nightmares unless Emma or Charlie or Fiona told him? And I know they wouldn't have. How could he know? And I know he's nuts, but to think that I have some kind of destiny? The guy's been doing too many rapture, raptors, raptures or whatever they popped back when he was double digits. <laughs> All right, so that is, as I said, the end of the episode, and I will see you all in the next one, and we will continue a little bit further on with the game. I really enjoy this, and I hope you join me and join with me. Until then.